those individuals that wish to speak again as hands are raised. I would like to call the meeting of the City of Wildwood's Board of Adjustment to order. The board members present today are Andy Bolanzino, alternate, Deborah Coleman, board member, Arnie Springer, board member, Jared Frank, vice chair, and myself, Mary Giles, chair. The Department of Planning staff present are Joe Vunich, director of planning, and Terry Gaston, senior planner. City attorney John Young and court reporter Courtney Tallman are also present. Bob Nandor, alternate, is also present, yet will only be a voting member if by chance the board loses communication with Zoom media. First, I offer into the record the affidavit of publication pertaining to today's meeting, April 16th, 2020, and take official notice of the zoning ordinance of the city of Wildwood, including chapter 400, article two, authorizing and establishing the board of adjustments, powers and duties. Now let me explain the hearing procedure. Please be aware the information I'm about to describe is also provided on the Board of Adjustment public hearing procedure handout, which was available online prior and up to tonight's meeting. This is an informal type of hearing. However, the meeting's proceedings will be recorded by a reporter for future transcription if needed. The petitions are called in the order listed on the agenda. As the petition is called, I will ask a Department of Planning staff member to read each request into the record. Thereafter, the Department of Planning will have opening remarks and a brief slide presentation. Then the petitioner or their representative will be asked to state their name and address, be sworn in by the court reporter and make a brief presentation to the board explaining the nature of the requested variance and the hardship necessitating it. The board will only consider the nature and condition of the property and whether these factors mandate a variance in order to allow for its full utilization. Board members may ask questions to clarify the facts of the petitioner's presentation. When the board is satisfied with the material presented by the petitioner, the chair will then ask if there is anyone present online who would like to speak in favor of or opposition to the request. Each speaker will be asked to provide their name and address, be sworn in, and then state their comments. Procedurally, the petitioner may request a continuance at any time during the hearing prior to a call for the vote in order to bring in additional documentation or information. The board may also request a continuance to gather additional information or for a further visit to the site. After the conclusion of input from all interested parties, the board will ask a staff person to provide the Department of Planning's report on this matter if requested by any member or of the board, the petitioner or any individual that is participating online. Additionally, any other information not presented in the previous testimony but pertinent to the request will be noted at this time. Once all speakers have been heard, the chair will call for a motion to grant or deny with or without conditions, then the board will vote. At that time, the discussion relating to the petition is concluded and no further input will be permitted. The board will generally make a decision today. Four members of the board must vote in favor of the decision for it to be approved. If a variance is approved, the petitioner has six months to obtain the necessary permits or establish the use or it will expire. If the board's decision is unfavorable, the petitioner has the right of appeal to the St. Louis County Circuit Court. This appeal must be done within 30 days of the decision. Moderators, are there any questions at this time? Hearing no questions at this time, the board will proceed. May the first request be read into the record, which will be followed by initial comments by the Department of Planning and a brief slide presentation. I just board lost. adjustment 820. Excuse I'm losing, me. I just lost the last part of what she said. It sounded like a robot. Can everybody hear it okay? Can you hear me? Can everyone else hear me okay? Okay. Which is that is that Courtney? Yeah. Which part I, did you miss? The very end. Um hearing no questions at this time. The, the board, board will proceed. proceed. May the okay. first request be read into the record which will be followed by initial comments by the Department of Planning and a brief slide presentation. Okay. Okay. Board of Adjustment 820, Andrew and Blair Dobb, 18482 Hinkin Valley Estates Drive, Wildwood, Missouri, 63069, request an exception to the natural resource protection standards for the purpose of constructing a new single family dwelling upon property located at 18482 Hicken Valley Estates Drive, St. Louis County locator number 26X110041, lot two of Hinkin Valley Estates resubdivision, 
established in 2001, resubdivided in 2006, per plat book 354, page 176. If granted, this variance would thereby authorize the relocation of the natural resource protection line, as well as its associated 25 foot foundation setback to accommodate the placement of the proposed dwelling into the currently protected areas while maintaining the existing amount of preservation area on the overall property, i.e. an equal exchange between preservation and building areas. This request is contrary to chapter 420.200 natural resource protection standards and procedures of the city of Wildwood Municipal Code as applied to properties located in the NU non-urban residence district chapter 415.090 NU non-urban residence district regulations of the city of Wildwood's zoning ordinance. This is located in ward six. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before beginning the hearing on this case, the Department of Planning would offer into the record the following as exhibits. The city's charter and master plan, the municipal code of the city of Wildwood, specifically chapter 400, article two, the Board of Adjustments Establishment Duties and Powers, Chapter 415 Zoning Regulations, the file prepared and maintained on this request, including the petitioner's application and related information, as well as the department's recommendation report, and any testimony, exhibits, or other information offered as part of tonight's hearing as evidence in this cause, and all of which may, be, <clears throat> may apply to the case before you this evening. The department has prepared a slide presentation by Director Vunich pertaining to this case, if the board would like it presented at this time. Yes, please. Madam Chair, we're going to share screen, so it'll look a little different for a bit. Okay. Madam Chair, the first slide that's being provided is an aerial photograph of the subject site. The subject site is highlighted in the turquoise line. Hinkin Road is also identified as well. The next slide that's being provided is the directions from City Hall to the subject site. As you can see, it's out Route 100 to Hankin Road, and then a short distance from that intersection at Route 100 and Hankin Road to the subject site. This particular slide is an aerial photograph, again, of the subject site, now in greater detail. As you can see, there is an ephemeral drainage way associated with the property, a small area of floodplain, 500 year, and then finally, as the aerial photograph depicts, there is an area that is free of woodlands and is primarily just grass at this time. Same aerial photograph now reflecting topography. So as you can see, the site's highest elevation is along its southern boundary, and then its lowest elevation is by the ephemeral drainage way. The next slides are photographs of the actual property. This is looking to the south from the area of the road. This is a view of the site taken more from the northwest corner. Sorry, it's jumping back and forth or it's set on a timer. Um, Again, a view of the site. We'll try this again. Again, the slide I referenced previously, this is from generally the area of the private roadway, northwest corner looking toward what, We're going to see if we can get the computer closer to where I am. 
This is another view. This is taken in the area of the ephemeral drainage way. This is the ephemeral drainage way on the property. This is a view of the private road. This is looking toward what would be described as the west. This is a view of the private road looking toward the east. The subject side is on the right hand side of the photograph. In the next slides are just views of the property. You can see the woodland areas as well as the grass. Again, more looking toward the south or southeast. And this is up near where the building site would be located, looking north down toward the private roadway. The next slide is the actual approved record plat that shows the resource protected area, as well as the buildable location. And it is identified by the red line, as well as the script in blue. And this is the amended location per the petitioner's request. The petitioner would like to relocate the area of disturbance up the hill further from the private roadway. And as part of that is offering a one for one change, meaning the amount of protected area would not be altered on the site. Adam Chair and members of the board, if there are any questions at this time, Terry and I would be glad to try to answer them. Are there any questions by the board for Director Vunich? Thank you, Director. Thank you. We'll move from the shared screen now. Can the petitioner um, please state your name, address, and relation to the property and then be sworn in by the court reporter? Yes, I'm in, Andrew Dobb. Uh, it's, I live at 18048 Manchester Road in Wildwood and uh, I own the property at 18482 uh, Hinkin Valley Estates Drive. It's a funny story how I got to this 18048 Manchester, but the whole goal is to build the house there in 1842. <laughs> Great. Can you be sworn in by the court reporter, please? Sir, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Mr. Dobb, can you um, please explain the nature of your request and the hardship or practical difficulty necessitating the variance? So it's basically shown on the first, I think it was the third slide that Joe uh, showed on there. It's, I lived in, I, I lived in a previous house that had drainage issues and honestly moving the house up the hill. I, I work in earthwork. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that, but if you move the house up to the top of the hill uh, and do the grading up there, you, you're, you're not going to have any drainage issues. And also it keeps the house uh, even further away from the, uh, the wetlands, 500 year flood. So it guarantees that uh, you'd never have any kind of an issue whatsoever with a flood or, or drainage of any kind if you moved it up the hill. And it, the view is absolutely beautiful up there. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's, uh, I've fallen in love with that property. So those are my reasons. <laughs> All right. Do any board members have any questions for um, Mr. Dobb? I do. I do have one question, if it's okay, if I ask it. Sure. I. So I'm just curious about, and I'm not saying that I'm going to do this, but I'm just curious about. Um, what do you call it? Geothermal uh, heating and cooling. You have to, I've been told that you have to run a pipe underground back and forth in a grid system. If I did that, 
would that have to be inside the area that I'm talking about? Or could I put it anywhere on the property as long as I restore it back to grass and trees? Because it's just it's just a pipe that goes like six or eight feet underground. So I don't really know. I was just trying to figure that out. Director Vunich. <laughs> Mr. Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Dobb, the resource protection area is 100% protected, which means no land disturbance, which is grading. So if you were to do a geothermal system, it would have to be within that envelope of disturbed ground or the buildable location. Okay, that's fine. I can figure that out. Do any board members have any questions for Mr. Dobb? Yeah, this is Bob Nandor. I've, okay. I've got one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Mr. Vunich, uh, it, it sounds like the petitioner is looking for a one-for-one -one swap. Um, and the it, it was a little quick for me to, to, to catch all this. I'm looking at the, uh, the copies we have that were hard copies sent here. But does it, does it appear that all, all appropriate swap boundary is all within the proper setbacks and that's A and B, enough ample room to build um, this property with all the things that have to go with it, septic, et cetera, that, that would make this uh, an equitable uh, swap of protected area. Well, to answer you regarding the setbacks and other related items standard to any lot in Wildwood, the design that's been submitted by the petitioner, Mr. Dobb, looks to comply with all of those. Is the buildable area sufficient for all the things that need to go in it, um, which includes the dwelling, access to the dwelling, uh, driveway, turning pad, et cetera, as well as the septic system itself and drain field, and well, if the property isn't served by a public source, that's a good question and one I'm sure Mr. Dobb has studied and understands. The geothermal may make it tight. Generally, it's a number of wells or holes that are drilled for the geothermal. So it may get a little tight and there are separation requirements between the drain field and the groundwater well, as you all know as board members. But for the most part, it's about the same size. Uh, the buildable area as it was down below and hopefully we'll accommodate it. If not, Mr. Dobb can come back to the Board of Adjustment, certainly. Yeah, so uh, one thing I, I wanted to point out real quick, in Hinkin Valley, it is a uh, community drain field. Ah, that's right. So um, the, the only thing that we have to put in is that we have to put in a septic tank and a, and a grinder, uh, grinder pump uh, next to the septic tank, but then it drains, it'll go down right underneath the driveway and tie into a uh, sanitary sewer line that carries the effluent off to the, off to the offsite, I call it offsite, off my property, uh, drain field, community drain field. So I don't have to worry about a drain field. And uh, I have talked with a couple people about the geothermal and I can run the pipes underneath my driveway and underneath like the backyard area. I, I should be fine. And honestly, I have a friend who owns an HVAC business. And I think he's going to kill me if I put geothermal in. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do it. <laughs> Mr. Dobb, do you Nandor. have any other questions? Sorry. Yeah. Madam mm -hmm. Chair, in response to Mr. Nandor, I forgot to mention, because I didn't remember, that that particular subdivision is on a centralized wastewater treatment plant. So the drain field, which does take up a good amount of square footage, would not be required on this site. So I think Mr. Dobbs done his homework. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions from the board members for the petitioner. Uh, at this time, I'd like to, is that all Mr. Dobb from you? That's all I got. All right. 
So this time I want to open the meeting to speakers. If there are any speakers in the audience who may want to speak in favor of or opposition to the request. Anybody else signed in? Uh, hearing none. Um, at this time, I'd like to offer the opportunity to hear an oral, oral pres presentation of the department's report, if anybody would like that. Hearing none, um, at this time, I'd like to offer the Department of Planning the opportunity to make any final comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair and members of the board, the Department of Planning is supporting this request. It is a one for one trade. And so no less of the site will be protected or disturbed than originally platted. And from the perspective of the site visit the department conducted, the location does have some advantages to the other that was near the private road. Madam Chair and members of the board, Ms. Gaston and I are available for any comments or questions regarding the recommendation report. Thank you, Director Bunis. Do, do any of the board members have any questions for the Department of Planning? Thank you. All right, at this time, I'd like to close the proceeding before vote and call for a vote for a motion to approve, deny, or approve with conditions. I uh, make a motion to a vote or to um, approve with the condition that the, uh, the deed is, is revised and submitted. We have a motion to approve with the condition that a deed is recorded. Um, do we have a second? I'll second. Who was Mr. Sprung, was that you? Hold on. That was me. Oh, okay. We have a second. Um, so at this time, I'd like to call for a vote. Uh, Mr. Sprunger, how do you vote? I approve. Mr. Frank? Approve. Mr. Bolanzina? Uh, yes, approve. Ms. Coleman? Hear me? Oh, approve. Yes. Okay. And I also approve your variance request has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Dobb. All right, we are ready for the next petition to be read into the official record by the Department of Planning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Board of Adjustment 920, Scott and Rachel Moore, 2408, Autumn Blaze Court, Wildwood, Missouri, 63011, request an exception to the minimum yard requirements general for the purpose of constructing a new deck onto an existing single family dwelling circa 2019 which is to be upon the property located at 2408 Autumn Blaze Court, St. Louis County locator number 23V330857, lot 5C, the Villages at Brightleaf Subdivision, plat three, established in 2018 per plat book 366, pages 497 through 503. If granted, this variance would thereby authorize a rear yard setback distance of 28 feet in lieu of the required 30 foot standard. This request is contrary to the requirements of chapter 415.140 R3 10,000 square foot residence district regulations of the city of Wildwood's zoning ordinance and planned residential development overlay district PRD ordinance 2145 approved by the city council in January, 2016. This property is located in Ward 5. Madam Chair and members of the board, before beginning the hearing on this case, the Department of Planning would like to offer into the record the following <clears throat> as exhibits. The city's charter and master plan, the, municip <clears throat> the municipal code of the city of Wildwood, specifically chapter 400, article two, the board of adjustments establishment duties and powers, chapter 415, zoning regulations, the file prepared and maintained on this request, including the petitioner's application and related information, as well as the department's recommendation report. And any testimony exhibits or other information offered as part of tonight's hearing as evidence in this cause and all of which may apply to the case before you this evening. 
The department has prepared slide presentation by Director Vunich pertaining to this case, if the board would like it presented at this time. Thank you. Please. Madam Chair, if acceptable, we'll go to shared screen. Please. We'll click through the first couple of slides. Keep going. As you can see, that was the last case. We'll get through those pretty quick. Madam Chair, the first slide that's being presented tonight is an aerial photograph of the subject site relative to surrounding development and roadway pattern. The subject site again is identified by the turquoise line. The next slide is the roadmap that gives directional information. And as you can see from Wildwood City Hall, the subject site is not very far removed. It's part of the new development called Villages at Brightly. The next slide is a aerial photograph at a larger scale to give more detail. Obviously the photograph is dated and doesn't reflect the development that's occurring. And just for the purposes of topography, this was the previous topography of the site You'll see from the photographs that are to be presented shortly, it's changed. The first slide is a photograph of the existing dwelling recently completed. The next is a view of the subject property, which is on the left-hand portion of the slide. This is the street that serves the property. And this is looking toward the south. And then finally, just a different view of the home. This is more looking in a northeast direction. The next slide is taken from Taylor Road Extension looking to the north. And the subject property is the second house, not the one under construction closest to your view the next one down that is white in color. This is a closer photograph of the subject property. And as you can see, it has a flat backyard that was created by the installation of an engineered retaining wall. And there's a fence along that retaining wall, a landscape easement, and then a site proof fence at the common boundary line between the villages at Brightleaf and Evergreen subdivision. The next couple of slides are interesting from the perspective that it gives you an idea of how the deck will be placed on the property. As you can see with the grading that occurred, there is a slope associated with the landscape easement from the common boundary of the two subdivisions to the retaining wall. The White House is on the subject property and the deck will come from the rear of the dwelling. And as you can see, there is an above grade entry that is associated with the deck request. This is not a walkout type basement. So the deck itself will not have a high profile relative to the grade and surrounding properties. This is the plot plan and this gives you a perspective. If you look at the building, which is identified as lot 5C, you can see it, it's called the Essex. The corner, the northeast corner is the area where the deck would be placed. This is a different image. As you can see, the front of the dwelling is to the left-hand side of the photograph. The rear of the dwelling is to the right-hand side of the photograph. The deck is shown in the striated lines and they are planning a substantial landscape plan on their private property. 
I do want to draw your attention to the arrow that has the kind of kink in it. That's the stormwater swale. And then this is a view now of the deck area. This is more in a direction east is at the top of the photograph. And it gives you a better representation of the landscaping planned on the private lot that would be in front of the retaining wall. And then additional landscaping that's partially installed in the easement and I believe is to be added by the petitioner. These are images of the proposed improvements on the property, an additional retaining wall, the landscaping, et cetera. And if Mr. Newberry would go back to the plot plan there. Oh, one, sorry. Thank you. I do want to reference the stormwater management component because it's a key element in the department's favorable recommendation. Madam Chair and members of the board, if there are any questions for Terry or I, we'd be glad to answer them at this time regarding the slide presentation. Do any board members have any questions for Director Vunich or Ms. Gaston? At this time, can I ask the petitioner to please state your name, address, relation to the property, and then be sworn in by the court reporter? Yes, my name is Scott Moore. I live at 2408 Autumn Blaze Court. I am the owner of the property. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Can you please be sworn in by the um, court reporter? <clears throat> Sir, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Can you please explain the nature of your request and the hardship or practical difficulty necessitating the variance? Yes. So first of all, I want to thank, say thank you to all you guys. I know this is a weird time we're in right now, so I do appreciate you guys being accommodating with the uh, Zoom meeting. Um, so this is the first uh, house me and my wife built. Um, and so I guess we're kind of rookies when it comes to this stuff. And uh, well, let's just say we were more focused on uh, finishes and stuff of that magnitude, not really looking at the uh, plot and uh, stuff that goes with building the house. Um, now, I will say we were kind of misled by the builder. Uh, they they made it seem like we could do whatever we wanted in that backyard. I mean, we even talked about pools and stuff like that. And as you guys kind of saw with the photos, there's no room for a pool. Uh, there's barely room for a deck. Um, now, I could go after the builder on stuff, but we all know how that will go. So uh, what me and my wife are concerned about is the resale value of this home. Um, we invested a lot of money in this house. And, um, you know, what we want to do is make sure that we're maintaining that value of the home. Um, and I know two feet doesn't seem like a lot, uh, but in my case, it's, it's like a mile for me on the stack, okay? And um, one of the things I do want to say is that we won't be putting any support post or anything in that two feet that you, I'm asking for. Uh, what we're asking for is to have the deck cantilever over that rear setback line. So there will be no post or any structure going into the setback. It will just cantilever over. Um, and then... You know, the other hardship I'd say is right now with all of us being trapped in our homes, it'd really be nice to have a outdoor space to enjoy while we're going through all this. So that's about all I got. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Do any board members have any questions for Mr. Moore? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, Mr. Moore, the, you know, <laughs> one of the challenges that we uh, have to deal with is um, you know, when, when do we really have, or, or when is there really a, um, you know, a, a difficulty or a hardship? I guess my question for you is, is a 14 foot deck versus a 16 foot deck, is that, is that really a, a severe hardship? Uh, for if you talk to an appraiser, which I have, it is actually it will actually hurt my value of my house. Hmm. Adam Chair, if I could add something. Sure. Board Member Sprunger, the department actually considered exactly what you just asked. Does two feet make a significant difference? 
The department didn't talk to an appraiser and certainly doesn't know the plans for the use of the deck, but the department did look at a couple of items. First and foremost, the impact of the additional two feet. And as you can see, since it is not a full walkout basement, the deck will not have a high elevation or profile, thereby creating a potential impact for surrounding properties. But more importantly, by the choice of the design that was made by the Moors, the petitioner with the cantilever, the swale actually, I think, will be more protected with the 16 foot depth of the deck than 14, because it basically makes it unaccessible or inaccessible to use. And so from that perspective, it, I think, helps the stormwater plan associated with this section of the development. So, so does, does, and I, maybe I missed that uh, on the diagram, does the deck actually extend oh, slightly over the swale? Um, it may not extend over the swale, but it's in very close proximity. And as we found over time, one of the first things that gets changed by new homeowners, no offense meant to the moors, is that depression in their yard that holds water and stays wet. So the swale usually is lost at some point. And when that happens, the stormwater management system kind of um, suffers. And I think Mr. Newberry is trying to get to that particular image. And that's it. Again, mm -hmm. as you can see in that lower right-hand corner, there's a reference to partial reference to swale. And then you can see the line with the arrow that has the kink in it. That's the direction of flow. And it, there is an area at inlet right on the edge of the property line as well. So by the extension of the deck, I actually think the swale will be more protected uh, versus if it were not and had greater amount of landscaping associated with it. Remember the swale isn't just a line, it's a trough and it extends beyond what is represented on the plot plan. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Moore for Director Vinich? Um, at this time, I would like to open the meeting to any speakers that might be in the audience who may want to speak in favor of or opposition to the request. Don't see any of those coming through. So, um, is there anybody who would like to hear the or an oral presentation of the department's report? Madam Chair. Yes. Pardon my interruption. As part of this virtual meeting, we had promised any uh, commentators that we would read the request, comment their comments into the meeting's record if they submit okay. it via our website. So I have several on this particular request. I apologize. Okay. It may take a few minutes. Okay. The first relates to BA 9-20 more. Um, and the comment is this house was built in late 2019 and already before the paint is dry, the owner or builders are requesting exception. Didn't they or the builder know about the ordinance or the exceptions or are exceptions so routine that nobody bothers to take them seriously? For this development, Wildwood is a joke. Where are the woods? They suggest let's protect the master plan and ordinances and reject these increasingly frequent requests before we have more concrete than woods. This was submitted by Derek Helling at 2445 Forest Leaf Parkway. Uh, the next is BA 9-20 more uh, does not support and the comment is an additional two feet of deck would allow for an additional number of people on the deck within the setback. The additional noise, likely lighting is not needed. The setback designed for privacy and the developer has not managed to create even that. Suggestions, encourage new homeowner, home buyers to understand a setback is there for their protection as well. 
This is from Jane LaCasa Finnegan, 2517 Rainforest Drive. The next again is for BA-920 more. Um, it is support. There are no comments. It's from Thomas Shanks, who lives at 2449 August Grove Court. The next is again BA-920 B9-20 more does not support. This is not the first variance request from this subdivision. Continuing to allow this type of variance negates having a setback at all. Please do not allow this. This is contrary to our ordinances. Suggestion, the people purchasing the lots requesting this type of variance need to be accountable for their decision to purchase that particular lot. If the size of the lot does not meet their needs, they should relocate. The subdivision adjoining this development have been told that setbacks are setbacks for a reason. Again, from Jane Finnegan at 2517 Rainforest Drive. And then the final one, again, regarding BA-9-20 more. It says does not support. Sorry, just saw the owner rationale for the request very similar to all of us in Evergreen here. We were not told that the property was part of town center. Maps were actually long until the 2006 update. It was the developer's fault that the buyer did not have a survey, look at the setback or easements. The Mitz bought a home with a small backyard with limited space that calls for a small deck. Home value he wants to maintain, so do we. I would bet Brightleaf can't have the vinyl fence that blocks our homes where trees used to be. Please, two feet additional decking over this already small setback is not going to make any difference in this person's property value. A certain degree of design and maintenance can be accomplished without reducing our mutual setback. Suggestions, suggest the owner understand his own words. He purchased a small backyard with easements and setbacks, normal in any home purchase, buyer beware. This is not likely the a first time home buyer. Again, this is from Jane LaCasa Finnegan at 2517 Rainforest Drive. Thank you for your attention during the oral reading of the comments we received regarding this particular case. Thank you. Thank you, Director Vunich. Um, at this time, I'll recognize anyone who has indicated a wish to speak by raising your hand. Public comment is limited to five minutes. After five minutes, we will inform you that time has expired. As you begin, please clearly state your name, address, and be sworn in by Qu Court Reporter Tallman. Uh, hearing no requests for comments, um, uh, this time I'd like to offer the opportunity to hear an oral presentation of the department's report. Hearing no request for that, um, does the Department of Planning have, um, would like to make any final comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair and members of the board, I kind of tipped my hand already. The department is supportive of this request. The department believes the additional two feet of deck will not have an impact on surrounding properties. And from the department's perspective, will preserve the stormwater management system better with the additional two feet of deck than not. Madam Chair and members of the board, the department's available to answer any questions regarding its recommendation and report. Terry and I are available at this time. Thank you. Do any board members have any questions for the Department of Planning? Thank you. Yeah, this is Bob Neander. Uh, sorry to go back, Joe. Um, you read, was it six letters and three were at least from the same person? That's correct. Okay, and of the other three, were any of them in the subdivision that were responding? Just to recap for me. Uh, one was from the villages at Brightleaf and the others were from adjoining property. Okay, and, and the one from Brightleaf, was that for or against? That particular uh, comment was in support. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for the Department of Planning? Does anyone, does anyone from the board have any final comments? 
at this time, I'd like to- Madam, Madam Chair, I'd be married. Okay. So can I ask Mr. Moore a couple questions real quick? Yes. Sorry, now, now that we read the, the letters. Um, will this variance, Mr. Moore, whether accepted or rejected, will that affect any lighting that you're doing? Uh, you're gonna have to say it one more time. You're like echoing. You're echoing. <laughs> who's talking? I don't know who's talking. It's I'm sorry. Hey, uh, I am Jared. Okay, I see you. Is that any better? It's not, but ask again. Uh, I'm not hearing you at all now. Anybody, can you guys hear me? No, I can. Okay, well, this, uh, will the variance, whether accepted or rejected, uh, affect the lighting in any way? Did you say lighting? Yes, lighting. Uh, I don't believe so, no. And removing any trees for the two feet? Are you removing any trees? No, there, no. And are you doing this to load the deck with more people? I am not. Okay. I, I, it, it, it's me, my wife, and an eighteen-month-old baby. That that's about yeah. it. So. <laughs> I just wanted to. I just wanted to follow up on the petitioners or the uh, the public comments concerns. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Do any of the board members have any other any final comments? All right, at this time, I'd like to close the proceedings so we can vote. Um, and can I get a motion to approve, deny, or approve the conditions? I, uh, I would like to uh, motion to approve the variance as requested. We have a motion to approve for Mr. Frank. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Who was that, Andy? Yeah. We have a second from Mr. Bolanzina. Um, Mr. Frank, how do you vote? Uh, approve. Mr. Bolanzina, how do you vote? Approve, as requested. Uh, Ms. Coleman, how do you vote? Approve. Mr. Sprunger, how do you vote? Um, yeah. I, um, you know, in subdivisions in particular, I think um, enforcing the setbacks is, is really important. And I think, you know, going into this, I was going to vote no, actually, uh, partially for that reason. I do think that Joe makes a good point about the stormwater. Um, and just by seeing some of the images, I, I think that, that it's not going to really be very impactful to any other neighbors. Um, it always makes me a little nervous, though, about precedence and I know that every one of these is unique I understand that um, but um, I, I'll, I'll vote approve I'll vote approve all right and I um, also vote for approving the request um, the your Mr. Moore your request for a variance has been approved as requested thank you thank you all right can we get the last petition read into the official record by the Department of Planning Thank you, Madam Chair. Board of Adjustment 1020, Joseph and Diane Monahan, 17321 Thunder Creek Road, Wildwood, Missouri, 63025. Care of Drew Bradshaw, the pool specialist, 11766 Missouri Bottom Road, Hazelwood, Missouri, 63042. Request an exception, <clears throat> exception to the minimum requirements general for the purpose of constructing an in-ground swimming pool with associated concrete decking and retaining walls, all of which are accessory to the established principal use, i.e. a single family, <clears throat> a single family dwelling existing since 1995 upon the property located at 17321 Thunder Creek Road, St. Louis County, Missouri, <clears throat> excuse me, St. Louis County locator number 27B110077. Lot 7, Thunder Valley addition to Thunder Mountain subdivision established in 1978, plat book 183, page 54. If granted, this variance would thereby authorize a rear setback distance of 6.5 feet in lieu of the required 30 foot standard. This request is contrary to the requirements of chapter 415.090 
and U non-urban residence district regulations of the city of Wawa's zoning ordinance. This is located in Ward 6. And before beginning the hearing on this case, the Department of Planning would like to offer into the record the following as exhibits, the city's uh, charter and master plan, the municipal code of the city of Wildwood, specifically chapter 400, article two, the board of adjustments establishment duties and powers, chapter 415, zoning regulations, the file prepared and maintained on this request, including the petitioner's application and related information, as well as the department's recommendation report. <clears throat> report. In any testimony, exhibits, or other information offered as part of tonight's hearing as evidence in this cause and all of which may apply to the case before you this evening. The department has prepared a slide presentation by Director Vunich pertaining to this case if the board would like it presented at this time. Thank you yes, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, we're going to the share screen again. Madam Chair and members of the board, the first slide is an aerial photograph of the subject property relative to the surrounding development pattern and the system of public and private streets. The property is located on a private street in a subdivision of large lot single family dwellings. The next slide is the road map that gives a reference from City Hall to the subject property. The property is located off of Alt Road, which is accessed via Route 109 to Manchester Road, Taylor Road to Main Street to City Hall. The next slide is an aerial photograph of the property. The north uh, north direction is to the right hand side of the slide with the top being toward the west. As you can see, it, it's a large parcel of ground greater than three acres in size has a very long driveway that accesses the existing single family dwelling that was constructed in 1995. The property is heavily wooded as well. The next slide is the same parcel of ground with the topographic information added to it. And as you can see, the site exhibits a significant amount of topography or slope grade, however you'd like to describe it. And there is a small ephemeral drainage way that defines what I would describe as the southeast corner of the subject property. The next slides are photographs of the property itself. This particular slide is taken from the private roadway looking at the petitioner's driveway. This for all intents and purposes is kind of viewed toward the west. This is a view further up the driveway and as you can see the slope is substantial. And in the upper left corner is the existing single family dwelling. <laughs> This is a close up view of that area, again, representative of the slope and the location of the existing single family dwelling. This is the property immediately to the east, the neighbor, and at the terminus of Thunder Creek Road. This is a view of the private street from petitioner's driveway. This is looking toward the south. In this particular slide, the proposed site plan or development plan, the pool is shown in what I would describe the upper right hand corner. There are other improvements identified. Some are a fireplace, retaining wall, and bocce court. 
Those are not part of the request tonight and are shown by others. This is a more large scale representation of the pool area. The house is in the lower right hand corner. The pool and decking is represented in the center of this slide. And this kind of puts it all together in a nice scale for visibility. And the pool is again shown in the heavy dark solid line, the decking which is around it, and then other improvements associated with the existing dwelling as well as those that are proposed. And Mr. Newberry, leave it on that one. I think we'd be in good shape. If there are any questions regarding the slide presentation, the department would be glad to answer them at this time. Are there any questions from the board for um, Director Vinich of the Department of Planning? Yeah, I do, I do. I, I, I can't quite read it. Uh, Joe, the, and maybe you said it and I missed it, but the long sort of dark shaded gray, is that the bocce ball court? That's my understanding, sir, but I'm sure the petitioner can address it or a petitioner's representative better. Okay, okay. Yeah, I just couldn't quite read it. Any other questions for the Department of Planning before we speak with the petitioner? Thank you. Thanks. Um, at this time, can the petitioner please state your name, address, and relation to the property and then be sworn in by the court reporter? Good evening, everyone. My name is Drew Bradshaw with the Pool Specialist. Our work address is 11766 Missouri Bottom Road, Hazelwood, Missouri. I'm here tonight representing the homeowner. Thank you. Can you please be sworn in by the court reporter? Yeah. Sir, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And can you please um, explain the nature of the request and the hardship or practical difficulty necessitating the variance? Absolutely. So a lot of the reasoning for the act of having the pool so close to the south line is due to the orientation of the house and the lot. The lot is very difficult shown by the topography uh, that Joe had shown earlier. A lot of it too is the constraints. It's a heavily wooded lot and there's a lot of rock on site too. Trying to be as respectful as we could to the neighbors without putting it alongside the house on the west side of the home and essentially the side yard. We tried to keep it in the rear yard, still as a backyard swimming pool, use it in a backyard type activity. Uh, the pool is about 360 feet away from the nearest house up towards the northeast. The adjacent lots are, again, heavily wooded. We are open to some type of concession, though. I understand that asking for what is normally a 30-foot rear setback, and we're now asking to reduce that down to six feet, is pretty substantial. We would be able to move the pool southwest along the same plane of the side of the house on the west side of the house, to make a concession. Uh, so we'd be happy to, we just want to try to make it work as possible for everybody and be fair. Do any board members have any questions for the petitioner? So if you, if you were to move the pool Southwest, would it kind of be where that and I think it's the bocce ball court. Would it be sort of in that area where the bocce ball court is? Yes, for the most part. We essentially slide down into that adjacent area where it's shown as a large gray shaded area. Yeah. I believe the bocce ball court's been removed from any school work in the future. And that's plan, plan mostly be just kind of a lawn area right now where there isn't much lawn on this property. It's mostly wooded or heavily treed and just very poor growth for lawn. And so if you move the pool there, would, I mean, then it would be within the 30 foot setback. Is that right? I think the adjacent walls towards the north side of the pool, uh, the deep end of the pool is on the north side closest to the rear property line. 
there would still be some type of encroachment from the patios and required retaining walls to fit the swimming pool into cut it into the side of the hill. Do you know how much? I it probably reduce the encroachment closer to instead of six feet of the property. It would here. Let me. I have an open an AutoCAD. Let me show you real quick. Let me do this real quick. Sorry, why well, doodle really fast, everybody. We'd probably be able to reduce the encroachment down to 15 feet of the property line with the retaining wall and the patio shown on the north side of the pool. So more or less, I'll be able to move the pool southwest about 10 to 12 feet without an issue. Okay. And did you consider at all trying to construct a plan uh, that would just keep you totally within the 30 foot setback. Have you, have you done any work on that? I have not. I was brought into this project as a subcontractor for a landscaping company and previously to that an architect or a landscape designer who's drawn up this plan. I was simply asked to bid it out uh, and then I won the bid. So now I'm dealing with the consequences of the previous design. So we're going through it. Uh, one step at a time. And I guess we're the part of the consequences, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Are there any other questions for Mr. Bradshaw? Um, thank you, Mr. Bradshaw. Um, at this Hi, moderators Arnett and Newberry. Did we receive any public comments by email or online? If there were any that were submitted, Director Vunich has those, but I just will note that there are no attendees, so there won't be any public comment um, okay. by anyone in the meeting. Madam Chair and members of the board, we did receive one comment form via the city's website. It is regarding BA 10 20 Monahan. It is in support. The comment is as the work planned with as the as the work plan with improve the property and based on the small amount of information provided, I feel as though this exception should be allowed. It's from Nikki Blumenfeld at 4438 Alt Road. So it is in support. Thank you, Director Bunich. Um, this is Deborah Coleman. Can I make a comment? Sure. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Um, I was just wondering the property that's exactly behind this piece of property. Um, do those homeowners have an opinion or a feeling about having this so close to their property line? Has, have they been consulted? Well, Madam Chair, with your permission, I'll respond to Ms. Coleman. Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure exactly how to direct that. The Department of Planning did do a mailing to all surrounding property owners and advised them of the request and the hearing date tonight. Right. We did not receive any other comments other than the one that was just read into tonight's record. Relative to a direct contact by the property owner to his neighbor, I would defer to Mr. Bradshaw, the petitioner's representative. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Coleman, I have not been made aware of any type of objection towards the swimming pool's location by the property owner to the north. Right, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the board? Um, this Sorry, is go Andy. Ahead. Yeah, this is Andy. I was just curious if there was a, a photo of the area that will be disturbed to, to construct the pool and patio area. Mr. Bolazina, when I was out at the site taking photographs for tonight's hearing, the application form lacked any contact information of the property owner. 
And I did not feel comfortable going up there without the benefit of contacting them first by telephone or email. So unfortunately, the department does not have a photograph that you requested. Okay. Kind of what I was curious about was if they did move the plan further south, like what's being proposed, does it disturb, does it actually disturb more land, more trees, mature trees potentially, than if it stays in the position it's at? Because if, if I look at an aerial, it, it almost looks like there's a clearing a little bit on that corner of the house. It's not much, but that's kind of what I was curious about. And we might not be able to answer any of that, so. <laughs> well, Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Mr. Bolazina, I appreciate the property owner and his representative being willing to consider an alternative design. The department had thought along those same lines based upon its site visit, albeit not extensive as it usually is, but the other information provided by Mr. Bradshaw to the benefit of the property owner. I think shifting it to that southwest direction and increasing the setback to something in the range of 18 to 20 feet is an excellent solution. The site does have significant slope or grade associated with it. The area over there seems to be the least woodlands or treed on the site. And at the end of the day, the old county standard for setback for a rear yard area was 20 feet. And I think having it at 18 to 20 feet would be appropriate given the physical characteristics of the site. Okay, thanks, Joe. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions for the petitioner or for um, the Department of Planning from the board members? Um, Director Vunich, do you have any final comments? Again, if anyone would like the report read into the record, although you have it available in written form, the department would be glad to do it at this time. Otherwise, if not, as the board is aware, the department recommended against this particular variance at a six and a half foot distance, based upon the discussion that's been held as part of this hearing tonight, the department would support a variance at a distance of 18 to 20 feet based upon the board's preference. Thank you, Director Munich. At this time, does, uh, does the board have any final comments? I'm going to close the proceeding before our vote and call for a vote. Do we have a motion to approve, deny, or approve with conditions? Can I ask one real quick question? Um, I'm sorry. So if the petitioner um, wanted to rework their plan and, you know, Joe, like you were suggesting 18 or 20 feet of, of setback, would they, would they need to just come back with a revised plan or would that make the most sense? Or, or can we just say, well, sure, just do it. Um, as long as you're 18 to 20, I mean, I'm, I'm not quite sure I, I understand the proper way to deal with that. Madam Chair, with your permission. Please. Mr. Sprunger, the typical approach of the Board of Adjustment has been to request a revised plan reflecting the new setback, whether it would be 18 or 20 feet and postpone action on it until the next meeting, which would be May. That has been the typical process and the board has that authority to request such action or it could recommend denial tonight or recommend approval without the plan being available. Okay, thank you. That makes actually it's perfect sense to me. Yeah. You're welcome, sir. Madam Chair, if I may. Sure. I would happily resubmit a revised design back to the city, mostly because the zoning request would still be required. And so we make sure we put it in the right spot when it comes time to build it. Uh, 
the Madam Chair, based upon Mr. Bradshaw's statement, the department would respectfully request a postponement to the May meeting to allow the submittal of a revised plan with a setback no less than 18 feet nor greater okay. than 20 feet. Can I get then um, a motion to postpone I'll make a motion to postpone until um, a revised. Okay, I'll go ahead and make a motion. Do we have to a second and... for the motion to postpone. I will second that. All right, I'll call for a vote now, um, Mr. Bolanzina. How do you vote? Yes, to postpone it. Did you guys hear me? I heard you. Okay. Looks like she's froze. I think Mary froze. Yeah, Mary froze. Oh, okay. Mary froze. <laughs> but we lost her. I, I don't know if we can do this. She's back. Oh, she's back. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. All right. So we have a, a first for a motion to postpone and a second. Um, Mr. Bolanzina, how do you vote? Uh, yes, to postpone. Mr. Frank? Yes, to postpone. Ms. Coleman? Yes, to postpone. Uh, Mr. Sprunger? Yes, to postpone, yeah. All right, so um, this will be postponed for a resubmittal until the May meeting. Is there anything else I need to do with that, Joe? Madam Chair, would you vote as well? I did not hear Ah, that. yes, I also <laughs> vote to postpone, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Based upon the vote, we'll have this back at the May meeting if Mr. Bradshaw and Mr. Monahan can complete the process. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. The meeting um, for the April 16, 2020 Board of Adjustment is adjourned. Madam Chair, the next meeting will be May 21st. With a deadline in person. With a deadline of March 30th. Okay. March 30th. March April 30th. 30th. April 30th. April 30th. I'm, I'm sorry. April 30th. I can't keep track of days anymore. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank you all and good night. Adam good night. Thank you. All right. Stay thanks. safe and healthy, please. Thank you, everyone. You too. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.